Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how I built my electric forging press. I use Harbor Freight's 5 ton electric log splitter. First I'll strip everything off that I'm not going to use and then I'll get started on the frame. Now that I have everything stripped off that I'm not going to use, I can start working on the frame. Here I have 6 inch by 3.3 inch I-beam. I have two 5 foot sections and two 1 foot sections. And then I use quarter inch plate on the top and the bottom. I'm not a very good welder, so I'm going to take this to my buddy Kyle who's going to help me weld it together. I just want to give a huge thanks to Kyle. He fixed my welder and without that I would not have been able to do this project. Now that the frame is welded, I'm going to go ahead and mount the log splitter to the frame. I use these two quarter inch steel plates to make the bottom mount. I drill four holes in the top plates and the log splitter will index into that mount. Then I use three quarter inch by two inch bar stock for the top mount. I use quarter inch plate to weld to the wedge. Then I'll bolt the plate to the mounts. Alright, now I'm going to clean up the steel so we can get everything welded together. I'm still learning to weld, so I don't trust myself on this project. So my buddy Ramsey's gonna come over and help me get everything welded right. Thank God for Ramsey, because without him, this project would not have been done or nearly as nice as it is. So thank you to Ramsey. So now that we have the mounts welded to the frame, I can cut this wedge off for one. But anyway, I drill three holes in each mount, then I thread the holes with a 3 8 tap. Then I drill the holes in the plate so we can mount it to the rails. Now that we have all the mounts done, we can bolt the log splitter into the frame. I use 3 8 stainless steel bolts. Now that the log splitter is mounted to the frame, I'm going to build a carriage on top of the ram. Then I'll mount guides and the die assemblies to the carriage. To build the carriage, I'm using a quarter inch plate and two three inch sections of I-beam butted up side by side. I grind 45 degree bevels on every seam that's going to get welded. That way we can grind everything back to flat. First we're going to weld these I-beams all the way around the center. Now that we have the I-beam welded around the center, we can weld all the plates around. Now that we got the carriage all welded up, we can mount it to the ram. I mark where I need to drill the holes, and then I drill and tap holes to accept half inch bolts. I'm going to mark and then cut this piece that's on top of the ram. That way I can make sure it's square with the frame. Alright, now I'm ready to mount the carriage to the ram. And then I'll use angle iron to make guides. That way it doesn't try to twist as it's tracking up and down. The angle iron is not at the right angle, so I'm going to take it to the anvil and hammer it out. I drilled and tapped 5 16th holes in the carriage, that way we can mount the guides. Alright, now we got the carriage done, we just need to make mounts for the dies. This piece I'm going to weld to the top of the frame. 
This one I'll bolt to the top of the carriage. I countersink the holes so the bolts fit flush. And then I mark where I need to drill and tap holes so I can mount this piece to the carriage. I use this angle iron to make guides for the dies, and then I cut one side short. I clamp the guide down so I can drill and tap the holes. Alright, now that the carriage and everything around it is finished, I'm going to paint it with truck bed liner and then do a final assembly. Now I'm going to make a guard so the motor will be protected from hot slag. Here I have everything set up to weld the fullerene dies. I made sure that they were both exactly the same. The Ramsey's going to come over one last time to help me finish welding these up. And just to see how many welders we can get on the project, Jason came over to weld up the flattening dies. So now it's time to make the foot pedal. The knob on the log splitter is about 7 inches off the ground. So I'm using these paint stir sticks to try to figure out how I want to build the foot pedal. I played around with different positions, but this seems to be the best solution for my problem. I'm going to use this old foot pedal that came off an organ. I'm going to attach this 3 quarter inch bar stock to the inside of the foot pedal. First I'm going to cut a slot down the center and then drill a hole through it so I can attach it to the second arm. I use this piece to make the second arm. I'm going to use this old wrench to connect the foot pedal to the log splitter. So now I have all the parts done to make the foot switch work with the log splitter. I had to shorten the middle arm later to make it work right. I picked up this electric foot switch from Harbor Freight, that way I can use the guts to make this foot pedal control the power as well as the mechanical. And I picked up a heavier compression spring as well. Alright, so I'm going to remove everything out of here and that way I can modify this box to fit into that foot pedal. I cut the top off this box to make it flat. I got this little piece of metal out of the organ foot switch from the electronics actually. But it's a perfect little piece to extend onto this switch. That way when you push down just a little bit it activates. But then you can keep pushing 
and it doesn't break the switch. I just used JB Weld to attach it, and it seems to work pretty good. All right, I think I have everything done. I'm ready to start assembling the electronics. First, I assemble the first arm in the mechanism. I use quarter inch bolts, nuts, and lock washers to secure it. Now I'm going to install the switch. So here I need this switch to sit up at this angle, so I'm going to put this little piece of wood in there to keep it at that angle. Now when I screw this piece in to hold it down, it'll stay at the angle I want. Alright, the electronics are done, now I just need to install it into the foot pedal. I slide it in there and find the perfect spot, and then I mark and drill a hole so I can mount the electronics to the foot pedal. All right, that's pretty good. Now we just need to mount in this compression spring. I used duct tape to try to keep it from slipping out of that hole. Seems to work pretty good. So this will be my welding contribution to the project. I just need to weld this ring on here to keep the spring from slipping out. Eh, whatever. Alright, now I'm going to finish putting these pieces on, and I'll use nylon locking nuts to keep it in place. Alright, the foot pedal's assembled. Now it's time to hook it up and see if it works. The foot pedal is all hooked up. I just need to plug it in and test it out. Alright, so this is my first test. The electronics work good, but it doesn't pull down far enough. So in order to fix it, I had to extend the 3 quarter inch bar stock on the foot pedal out about 3 inches. And then that center bar, I cut it in half. And then the pivot point on the wrench, I brought down about an inch and a half. Now that I made the adjustments, the foot pedal is working really good. I didn't notice how far my dies were off while I was recording this, but certainly need to adjust it. Now that it's finished, I think I'm going to bolt it down, that way it doesn't wobble all over the place. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this, it seems to work really well, I'm excited to use it, and I'll let you know how it goes. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, definitely leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as possible.